So what I'm going to look at here is challenge 33, which is going to bring together a lot of programming skills that you've already covered, but I'm going to assume that you have forgotten a lot of stuff. So I'm going to go over things as I do it, just to give you a little bit more explanation of how the whole process works and probably help you out when it comes to similar things in the exam. So the first tip I've got for you is to try and read the scenario. So in this particular case, it's already kind of broken it down into bullet points, but you need to read the scenario clearly and try and pick out the key bits of information. So I usually follow some sort of process called iPod, which is where you look for your inputs, any processes, outputs, and any decisions that need to be made during the program. So if we start with inputs first, what it's saying is ask the user to input so here's our first word how many gcses they have so when you see an input you need to come up with a little variable that can actually help you make sense of the program so what i'm going to do is i'm going to double screen this i'm going to open up my python put that on the left powerpoint on the there you go. So, if I create a new Python file, put this on the right, we need to have some sort of input is our first thing that we're going to do. So, I'm going to put in a sensible variable name. So, a variable is an area in memory that can have a value assigned to it that can change during the program. So, in this particular case, it's how many GCSEs they have. So you could call it GCSEs. We're saying that it's an input. So in this particular case, it's an input. But what we want it to do is it's a whole number, isn't it? So how many num how many GCSEs you have is a whole number. So we're going to give it a data type of integer. Then it's an input. And then we can write the message to the user. So it says in the question, asks the user to input how many GCSEs they have. So you literally say, how many GCSEs do you have? I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller so you can see. Okay, every time you open a bracket, so open bracket, open bracket, we need to close it. So I've got one close, we need another close bracket. That's one of the most common errors in Python programming. So we go back to the question. Next bit is they should then be allowed to enter a result for each GCSE grade. So what we've got to think of is another um, input is going to be grade. So another variable, grade equals, again, our grades are nine to one now. So we need it to be an integer. Enter the grade and close the bracket. Now as you read through this algorithm, you'll notice that it gets a little bit more difficult or a bit trickier. If you did that on the exam question, you're still gonna get a mark or two because you've, you've understood basic part of the program, which is the inputs. Next bit is computer should work out how many points they've got. So we need to add up every time you input a grade. So we this is the first little indication that something needs to be repeated during the program. So part of our process needs to be repeated. We need to use some sort of iteration, which is gonna be a loop. Because for every grade, it says here for each GCSE grade, for every time they enter it, something needs to happen. So this part here is going to need a, to be a loop. Now there's two types of loop. We've got count controlled and condition controlled. We usually use count controlled when we know how many times. So in this particular case, we know how many times because it's going to tell us how many GCSEs you have. So we're going to do four grade in range. And in the brackets, you have you can have three different things you can have the step count so they can have the start 
value, the end value, and the step count. That would do it 10 times. Start from zero, go to 10, and increase by one each time. What you can also do in Python is simply say how many times you want it to do it. So five would do it five times, six do it six times, seven do it seven times. In this particular case, we want to do it the amount of times that they have a GCSE. So the best thing about programming is that value is now in the variable. We can put that in there and it will swap that word for whatever number they input into that particular part there. For a for loop, we need to put a colon at the end and everything inside it needs to be indented. So you'll see here, if I press enter, it automatically indents it across. If it hasn't, you can go to format, indent region, and it moves it across for you. You can also press tab on the keyboard, which is above caps lock, and it moves it in for you. So that's our first little bit. That is now going to repeat that line of code however many times they have GCSEs. So if you get eight GCSEs, it'll do this line of code eight times. Obviously, what's going to happen is every time it loops, this value is going to change and keep changing and changing and changing. So we need to do something with that. It says here the computer should work out how many points they've got. So we need to add up how many um, points they've got from adding all the grades together. So the best way of doing this is to use what I call a counter. So what I'm gonna do for that is in the first line, we need to create a variable that's gonna to total up the, to uh, the score. So we could call this total points from your GCSEs equals an integer, and we can set it as zero to start with. So that is basically creating a variable as a whole number and at the moment it's zero. Then what we need to do is as part of this loop, every time we ask the user for a grade, we need to add up the total amount of points. So what you can do is total points, two different things. You can do total points equals, it's going to seem weird, total points plus grade. So that's going to take zero at the start and then it's going to add the grade to it and then move on. Next time round through the loop, total points is a different number and then you're going to add the grade on again. Then the next time round, total points is a different number. If you find that confusing, what you can do is do plus equals grade. So that just keeps adding to total points, adding to total points, adding to total points each time. Okay, next bit of the question says if their score, that's the giveaway in the exam. If that particular word is if, it usually means you're gonna to need to use some sort of selection. So in this particular case, we're gonna use an if statement. This loop, is basically done so therefore we can move down and start the next section of the program so we've done our inputs and we've done the main process now what we need to do is use the value that we've created total points to do a little bit of a check so we need to check if total points is greater than 40 says here if it's 40 or over so it can be greater than or equal to 40 then we want to do one particular thing which says output you can go to the sixth form so just to save time I'm going to copy that across and you know to output we use print so that's our first case of selection done that's our first side so if total points if this little argument here is true then we need to print this out then usually what you can do is else to go to the other side of the argument but what it's done here is it's added a middle argument in so we need to add another part of the if statement 
So to do that in Python, we use elif, which is short for else if. And we're going to do total points. And the logic that it wants here is between 35 and 39. So what you've got to do is greater than 35 and total points is less than 39. So this here is a Boolean operator. Boolean operators, we can have not, or, or, and. So that means that this condition and this condition need to be true. So that means that it needs to be between 35 and 39. Can't include 35, can't include 39. It says between. I suppose you could argue semantics that it might include 35 and 39. So if you want, you can do greater than or equal to and less than equal to. That is the next condition. So you need a colon at the end and it should, when I press enter, automatically indent. And we need to output that particular condition. So this time it says a discussion is needed. So in other words, that's like you'll sit down with someone from the sixth form and they'll decide whether you can get in or not. The last case, so this is else, it says otherwise. So this is else, if anything else is, is true. So if it's, um, if it's more than 40, it'll do that. If it's between 35 and 39, it'll do that. If it's less than 35, then it will print, sorry, not enough points. That is basically the whole program done. So we can test it and maybe we might get an error here or there because sometimes obviously everyone makes a little mistake when you type in things. You can have a look and see whether the program works or not. So we'll run the module. Obviously I need to save it first. I'll save it into some kind of a Python folder. Yep. There it is, challenge 33. So I'll save over this one. How many GCSEs do you have? You'll notice that the line is straight after the question mark. Sometimes people press enter before they type. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that in a minute. I'll say, I have five GCSEs. Then it asks you to enter the grade for each one. So say you get a grade four, grade five, grade four, grade three, a grade seven. And it says, sorry, not enough points. So if you work that out properly, you do 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 4 is 13, plus 3 is 16, and plus 7 is, there, is 23. So that is definitely nowhere near enough points. So that has done it correctly. So to look at these particular things here, at the end, we want this to move down a line. So, so what we're going to do is try adding, I can't remember which way around it is. As part of the string, run that one. There we go. So by adding this slash, which is uh, next to the letter Z on your keyboard, and then N, it basically tells Python to put it onto a new line. So that stops people from pressing enter before they type their answer in. Then I could say I have eight GCSEs, and then again, you'll notice enter the grade, it's straight after, and people are tempted to press enter before they type. So we're going to put the same thing in all of the other lines of strings. So slash n, slash n. Don't really need it on the outputs, to be fair. So it's just the inputs. Let's run the program again and just make sure that the actual logic works. So how many GCSEs you have? Eight, and we'll say we got all really high grades. So this should get us into six form. You can go to six form. So that there is a program that we know is working. I could probably try and figure it out to test that bit, but we don't need to because we know everything's working okay. As I said earlier, the most common errors are if you miss a bracket off and you get something like this invalid syntax and it doesn't always give you the exact reason why 
because it's saying it's there but it's not is it it's here so by fixing that error and then running it again it then works again um other errors could be that you forget to cast so you might just put equals input and the problem with that is you can't add a string so if you go how many gcses you have eight hence the grade six it'll come up with this because it knows you can't add an integer and a string together you can't add a, a, a word to another word so you have to cast it it's called casting and put it into an integer before you can get it to work okay that's the end of challenge 33